So tomorrow night is going to be an amazing night for viewing. Went ahead and looked at that earlier today. And uh, I want to make sure I got everything squared away to do some different type of imaging. So in the last video you guys saw me, I went ahead and did some imaging of Saturn and Jupiter. I want to try and pick up some different objects out in the sky. And tonight is a solid night to practice. So we don't have the whole night to work towards it. I only got to about 10.30 before the clouds start to roll in. But it's enough time to try out a few of the different upgrades and changes I've made to my telescope. Um, with the different things that I've found out and learned in, over the last few weeks of it. So if we go ahead and grab the camera here for you. First things first, I went ahead and built a new little sighting scope here. So it's different than the one that we had in the previous video. Um, this one is a bit easier, a bit more open to uh, find targets in the sky. I tried doing some shooting this morning, unable to see it with the one that I had. So wanted to make sure that I had it and ready to go. Next change is that I have a dedicated app for imaging. I went ahead and got the cell phone app Deep Sky Camera Beta here. And uh, this bad boy will allow me to take a series of images all in the raw format so that I can stitch them together for some deep sky imaging. So we're gonna stick this on top of the telescope and get it mounted. But before we do that, we're gonna actually set this up and have it ready to go and mounted during the daylight here. So I'll take some shots outside and make sure that I can uh, see what we're doing so we'll jump over into that so getting this things lined up is an absolute pain in the butt you got to take your cell phone out of the case first of all and I, I went ahead and put some sharpie marker on the bottom down here to uh, basically determine the correct angle to have this little arm situated at so that i can make sure that what i have is in centered shot so once i get this thing situated in over the top i'm going to switch over to just generic camera mode here regular old photo to get the positioning right and once I get it sort of centered in the view field go ahead and lock it down but anyway you can see or hopefully can see that it's pretty well centered on the entirety of the view field there and you should be able to see me waving if the uh, focal plane is correct and if it's not oh well so first thing to do was to actually set up the telescope and get it pointed you can see it in the background that there are some telephone poles up on top of the hill so I'm getting this thing set up right now focusing on the telephone poles. So if we go ahead and look down the side of this, you can see a little tiny box formed by the site and it is directly centered around one of those telephone poles. And if I bring the camera up to the eyepiece, you should be able to see a telephone pole way up there. I guess it's an electrical nine, not a telephone pole, but whatever. And then with the previous setup that we did on the eyepiece with the camera, we're ready to go and ready to give it a shot here tonight to see how it works. So all that's left to do is to wait. All right, so I don't know if it's dark enough on the camera to see but uh, we finally have some stars starting to come out. And the first one that we need for what we're gonna practice on tonight is on Taris, and it is up and visible right now, so I can actually um, start getting set up and ready to uh, make my way over to the first thing we're gonna practice on tonight. Uh, you saw in the time lapse, or maybe you didn't, that we have some clouds rolling in. They're gonna be here within about an hour and a half to ruin my night, so uh, I gotta move pretty quickly here to practice and get ready for the big shoot tomorrow. So I don't know if you can tell, and I'm looking through this camera and you very clearly cannot tell, but maybe you can see me. Um, I have a lot of cloud cover that has come through, which has limited my visibility to basically nothing. Um, so we are just trying this on a singular star out here just to practice with the app and make sure that we got it set up for tomorrow's session. So trying to understand how it works everything that it does. I've learned that I need to figure out how to keep my phone from locking because every time it locks, it cancels the app and just stops taking pictures, which is awesome. Got to figure that out. But otherwise, I think the app is working. So we'll see how it comes out in the end, um, what I'm able to draw out of this picture. But uh, yeah, for now, it looks like I got absolutely nothing as far as uh, images go. In case you're curious, I got basically nothing from the app, but I guess I did learn ISO settings and what I need to do in order to get stars that aren't terribly star trailed. All right, so it's the next day after all the setup and practice work that I did. Really hope that all of that time I spent yesterday pays off. Um, here, let me let me grab the camera and show you. We have absolutely fantastic viewing conditions today. Got one cloud right there. Otherwise, it is crystal clear for the rest of the night. So uh, I am very excited and ready to have some fun tonight. So for tonight's shot, I'm actually gonna take a trip over to a more remote location over at my best friend's house. He's got a whole field, open field, in the woods away from anything, so as long as I don't get abducted by an alien, it'll be a solid night of imaging. So, you know, I'm out here with my best friend, Joey. <laughs> you can't see him, but he's taking me to the middle of a field 
in the woods. That's civilization way out there. That's a solid, what, three miles out, you think? Yeah. <laughs> Not that far. But it's a good distance away and we have pretty clear view of like everything up here. This is kind of friggin' spectacular. You're not gonna see anything after the video stops, but trust me, it's, it's fantastic. 100% worth uh, leaving my crap house. So all that was left to do was to set up the telescope and the truck headlights definitely helped with that. And now we're gonna get to the super disappointing portion of the video. So this is the first thing that we found. It is the M7 star cluster. And this is what it's supposed to look like when you have a real good camera and, and this is what we were able to get. So I guess you can see that the stars match up positionally, but definitely not as spectacular. To give you a frame of reference as to where this is, if you were looking straight down the Milky Way galaxy, you would see the M7 star cluster located to the left side down near the horizon at the time that we were doing the imaging. So you can see the star cluster right there. So we found it, which is cool, but weren't able to get a super amazing image of it. And I'm going to give you a spoiler alert, next thing's not exciting either. That little ball of fuzz is the Andromeda Galaxy, the closest galaxy to the Milky Way. This is where it should be located relative to the M7 star cluster, so there's the center of the Milky Way galaxy. Take a hard left over here, and if you look up into the distance, you will see the M31 little object, which is the Andromeda Galaxy. So that's what it's supposed to look like, and uh, well, that's what we got. So we found it though, which I think is the coolest part, right? Being able to look out and actually see a galaxy. Obviously it looked better in the telescope itself, but nothing like that. So to not be disappointed like I was after that session the other night, I woke up at four in the morning to be able to try and take pictures of the Orion Nebula. So this is what I was able to obtain after stacking 600 pictures, which looks absolute garbage because like 600 of the 600 didn't stack. But I messed around with the colors and shading a little bit and made this pretty little image of it. So you can see some of the reds that are a part of the Orion Nebula itself. And uh, yeah, so came out okay. But if you're wondering what this one's actually supposed to look like, you can see that I'm also about a billion times away from the actual quality of the image. I guess you can see some of the red and some of the blue, but other than that, no good whatsoever. Now I don't want to end on a crappy series of pictures so we're going to go to the following day after where I went ahead and it did a video of the moon. So I went ahead and took this video footage of the moon and you can see it right here running right you can see it moving across the field of view. Dump that footage into PIP which is the same program that we used when we did our planet video the other day. Took that output and put it into auto stacker which was the same program we used to stack the images of the planets. Split it off by the best frames to get a stacked image of the moon that you see right here, and then process the image in Registax to get this image that you see of the moon. So, neat little shot of the moon on its way. Uh, this was a waxing crescent. So yeah, that is the extent of my latest adventure with my telescope. So this was all put together over the course of roughly a week and a half. We had a lot of work to go ahead and put this together. And I think I was definitely able to figure out the limits of what I have as far as a setup goes. This folder of images that I've taken over the last like month since I've gotten this telescope is over 100 gigs of data. And it's still not done. Literally just tonight I was out recording more videos of the moon so I'm definitely still having a great time with this This is absolutely stunning being able to go out at night and look at an entirely different solar system entirely different galaxy uh, it's such a, a humbling experience to be able to see these different things so now that I'm starting to figure out the limits to my imaging capabilities I think I need to reevaluate what I want to do next and I think what we're gonna try next are gonna be some larger frame shots of constellations or stuff like that so you can look forward to seeing that video as the next video in the series. But anyway, guys, I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Let me know how I can improve this as well. I'm trying to add more of these types of videos to the channel every once in a while. So uh, definitely looking to improve. So any feedback, positive or negative, would be appreciated. Thank you all so much for watching. Once again, I hope to see you at the next video. Peace.